How to build a threat hunting process. The first thing you need to do is to realize what are the assets, what are the most important assets in your organization. Maybe it's customer data, maybe it's a, a source code, maybe it's uh, some emails, some information you have in the organization, whatever the most important assets you need to protect. And what are the attack vectors that might target them? This is the first thing you need to do, which is can be done by risk assessment. The second thing is what are the attackers that might compromise your organizations? Who might target you? Who might target your assets? Who might use different techniques or tactics to compromise these assets that you are trying to protect, which can be done through threat intelligence? Having these two is the first space you need to start with threat hunting. Some people, they rely on threat intelligence, they take the IOCs of these attackers, they put these IOCs in their SIM, and they call that threat hunting, which is an important step to do, but this is not threat hunting yet. This is just the use of threat intelligence. Threat hunting go beyond the IOCs because the IOCs can change from one attack to another. The malware can change, the domains can change, and sometimes the they always change. Some attackers, they always change them. But what doesn't change is the attacker's techniques, what he exactly do every single step. He might be using malicious documents and you will see him in the first attack using malicious documents in the second one he does, in the third and fourth and so on. The techniques very rare when they change. Maybe he adds one new technique when it's being known and being discovered, but mostly they rely on the same techniques they use every single time. And with these techniques, you can build a hypothesis based on these techniques. So once you realize your assets, you realize who might target you and their tactics and their techniques, you might take one of these techniques and build a hypothesis around that. Maybe the, you have been you, one of the hypotheses that I have been compromised by a malicious document. This malicious document may be sent through normal email and attachment, or might be sent through LinkedIn, through uh, personal emails, or whatever the way this this email or this malicious document has arrived to the to the workstation. Now, what I have to do is to investigate a malicious document that has executed a kind of a macro. This might be my hypothesis. Another hypothesis may be the attacker has compromised different machines, but rather than he used the backdoor to communicate back to these machines, he used NGROC to tunnel the RDB communication to the public and basically expose the RDB uh, to the public so the attacker can easily uh, connect back through RDB to different uh, compromised machines. I can investigate the use of NGROC or TeamViewer. Maybe he installed TeamViewer and he used TeamViewer to access all the compromised machines. I can basically assume this or build this hypothesis and perform an investigation based on that. Basically, the steps that you need to build your own hypothesis. Once you have the hypothesis as a different way to investigate it, maybe your hypothesis is mostly based on a technique that can be detected through through logs. Maybe it's based on assuming that these specific assets have been compromised, just these assets have been compromised without thinking about who the attacker and what's the technique. And that will require more in-depth investigations on the compromised assets. See if there's any sign of compromise and how this compromise has happened, if it actually happened, and how you can if you respond to it or create a rule later on to proactively check these assets and make sure that they are not compromised. The same when you have when you are detecting a specific technique like NGROC or TeamViewer, then you after you investigate that, if you see that they have been used in one of the one of the compromised machines, then you will kick a, an instant response process. But if not, you will just build maybe a sigma rule to just detect these activities once they happen once there's any use of ngrock or any use of team viewer you to mark trigger an alert and then get your SOC team to respond on time to this event hope that video summarized threat hunting it's a very in-depth process i might have a complete live training about it later on but for now i just want to summarize it in this video hope this video is helpful see you in the next video bye bye